your boy is back. That's right, you get a little twofer today. We are also doing tight ends, and let me be very clear, there is a very abrupt drop-off for the talent at the tight end position in this year's class. Now, what you want to do with tight ends, since we have shorter benches, if you can't get one of the top three, four guys, you want to try and handcuff two guys together that both have decently high ceilings, but that can give you decent production every week. Tight end is not going to be your breadwinner unless you have a very specific guy. Evan Homewater has tried this strategy before. It's not worked. However, I do think there are a few guys that have the value of an RB2, RB1, wide receiver 1, and so let's get into it right now. The number one ranked tight end, and this is not my rankings here. This is, again, coming from the book. Nino's guy. There he is. Say hi, Josh. Number one is Travis Kelsey. Now, Travis is entering his ninth year for the Kansas City Chiefs out of Cincinnati. Travis, last year, 11 touchdowns, 15 games played, 1,400 receiving yards. His value is in the red zone. He's going to be the touchdown go-to guy for Mahomes. He's his security blanket. But with Tyree Kill, with Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, with Michael Hardman, at what point do you say he's going to start to regress? I don't think this is the year. I think Travis is an absolute stud. I just don't think he's the best overall tight end at this very moment. So who do you think is that guy, Jamie? You might be wondering. Well... Number two is George Kittle, San Francisco 49er in his fifth year. Now, I had George last year, and George got hurt. He usually plays all 16 games. Doesn't matter if he's broken a wrist or a leg or what have you, but he just had, I believe it was a back injury last year, something that really hampered him. So he only played in eight games, but still had two touchdowns and 600 receiving yards. So a little under 100 yards a game. But the year prior had five touchdowns, over 1,000 receiving yards, and the year before that. So 2018, five touchdowns, 1,300 receiving yards, and 16 games played, averaging 16 yards a catch. That's the value year. And I think George is going to get back to that because he's hyper-competitive. He is the best target on that offense. That was the year that they went to the Super Bowl, actually, and lost to the Patriots. And so... If you are looking or lost to the Chiefs, excuse me, excuse me, everyone. I make mistakes just like everyone else. But I do think George Kittle is an absolute stud. Can he stay on the field? Hopefully. But if he can, he's Jimmy G's favorite weapon and will be the top producing talent on that team. Number three, and could arguably be number one, Darren Waller, seventh year player for the Las Vegas Raiders. Darren last year, nine touchdowns, 1,200 receiving yards, played in every single game. If he can get you nine touchdowns, even eight, even seven, that's huge. Darren is good for at least 100 a game, at least 10 targets a game. And he's by far and away the most athletic out of any other tight end that we're going to bring up here. His ceiling is incredibly high. A lot of quarterbacks and other GMs and players around the league believe very highly in Darren Waller, and I have no reason not to, to agree with them. I think Derek Carr is, uh, eh, or David Carr, no, Derek Carr. Derek Carr is the, <laughs> the current quarterback, um, and I just think he's, he's a stud. He just is in a Raiders offense that's very hit or miss without the, the right guy under center. So Darren Waller, number three. Number four, TJ Hawkinson third-year player for the Detroit Lions. He is out of Iowa. Now, TJ, is, is he's, his ceiling is very high. His ceiling is probably George Kittle, a, a combination of George Kittle, Travis Kelsey. He had six touchdowns last year, 700 receiving yards, played in all 16 games. I had him his rookie year because I knew that, I mean, he was a first-round draft pick. So, the value is there. It's just, can he produce? Does he have the quarterback that can get him the ball consistently that's a, a big question Jared Goff is now the quarterback with the Lions can he develop a rapport I think TJ is the best receiving option that offense has after losing Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones in the offseason so TJ is someone to watch who could sneak in finish the year in the top three in terms of production 
But right now he is uh, number four ranked tight end entering his third year. Number five, and this guy, I've never had him. I've kind of wanted to because I've had the quarterback that gets him the ball all the time and just wondered, what are you doing? But I guess it works for him. Mark Andrews, fourth-year tight end for the Baltimore Ravens. Mark last year, seven touchdowns, 700 yards in 14 games played. In 2019, he had 10 touchdowns, 800 yards. He's a Lamar's red zone guy. When Lamar's scrambling out looking for a guy, Mark knows where to sit, knows where to get open. And uh, and so definitely, I think Brent's had him before. A few guys have, have had good years with Mark Andrews, and there's no reason to believe that he wouldn't have another decent, if not pretty good year for the Ravens this year. Number six is Dallas Goddard of the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, Dallas is hoping to blossom into the first round pick that they drafted him as a lot of the pundits believe he's going to take over as that number one tight end position for the Eagles now that Zach Ertz is on his way out and just aging his production doesn't quite match it he had three touchdowns last year 500 yards he only played in 11 games when he played in all 16 games back in 2018 he had four touchdowns and only 300 receiving yards so where's that going to net out and he's got Jalen Hurts as his quarterback. Is he the security blanket? I think Jalen's going to try and dunk it down to his little gadget guy receivers like Devontae and Jalen Rager. Number six. Oh, wait, that was number six. Number seven, Noah Font. Noah Font is entering his third year for the Denver Broncos. He's also out of Iowa. Him and TJ Hawkinson were in the same draft class. Or they went back to back, but those two were stud tight ends for Iowa, and the only reason Iowa was ever really relevant outside of having pretty good offensive line as well. Noah's production, similar to his teammate in Iowa, TJ, has not translated into the NFL yet. Last year only had three touchdowns, 600 receiving yards, and 15 games played. Year before that, three touchdowns, 500 receiving yards, and 16 games played. So, uh, he's 23 years old. He's 6'5", 240. He's a big body. He's like similar to Darren Waller, a little bit shorter, but similar to Waller in his mobility. Can he turn into that top five tight end that the Broncos drafted him to be? That remains to be seen. Number eight, Logan Thomas. Now, Logan Thomas for the Washington football team is entering his eighth year, and he's got an incredible story. He was a quarterback at Virginia Tech. And they forced him, they do this with some of the more mobile quarterbacks who just really don't have an arm or have the brains to be an NFL quarterback. So he was a Buffalo Bill at one point, fun fact, as a quarterback. And it might have been the Bills that transitioned him to tight end. But ever since he made that transition, his production has skyrocketed. Last year, he had six touchdowns, 670 yards, and 16 games played. I was listening to an interview yesterday with Ryan Fitzpatrick talking about him being his favorite target in the middle because he's big. He knows where to sit, find the open area. He's got good hands. He's smart enough because he was a quarterback to know how to kind of manipulate the linebackers with his eyes and his route running. And, you know, Logan Thomas is is a very solid option and kind of speaks to what I was alluding to at the start of this episode, which is you want to handcuff two guys, a Logan Thomas and a TJ Hawkinson, if you can get a hand uh, hand on both of them. Those two guys will give you enough production to counter what a Travis Kelsey or a George Kittle, a healthy George Kittle or a Darren Waller might get you. Number nine, Kyle Pitts, the rookie for the Atlanta Falcons out of Florida. Now, Kyle Pitts, he literally is the size of Darren Waller, 6'6", 240, and Let's just put it this way. He was the fourth overall pick, okay? The fourth overall pick as a tight end, they don't view him as purely as a, as a tight end. He's going to be a hybrid wide receiver tight end and kind of evolve the Falcons offense to complement Calvin Ridley now that Julio's gone. But analysts, GMs, everyone wanted to give this guy a, a Hall of Fame jacket coming out of, out of Florida into the draft because – just the production he had there was so impressive. His catches are so impressive. I'm excited to see him play this year. I think he is another high risk, high reward guy. And the risk, I only mean it in the sense that he's a rookie. 
okay? He's going to face really good defensive players that he's never faced before. The SEC, he probably faced it at Alabama or LSU, some of the guys, but imagine an entire defense being made up of guys from LSU and Alabama who have five years ahead of him in the NFL, knowing how to shut down these prospects, these guys that come in, you know, buying their own hype. And so I need to see the production on the field for Kyle to to say that he's truly the kind of the savior to that Falcons offense that he's being anointed as right now. But let's put it this way. If you draft him and he's got 10 touchdowns and 1,200 receiving yards and has this big year, you're going to be very happy. And to get him at number nine at tight end, he's another guy that I would say have a security blanket to compliment him just in case he gets hurt. We don't know if he's able to be durable in this league yet. Just in case he runs into good defenses, he's got to face that Bucks defense. The Carolina Panthers have a good defense, and the Saints are always in the playoffs for some reason. So just buyer beware with Kyle Pitts. He's only 20 years old. Let's see what happens with him. Number 10, and I'll round this one out pretty quick, Irv Smith Jr. for the Minnesota Vikings entering his third year out of Alabama. Irv, last year, finally, we started to see signs of production. Five touchdowns, 363 yards in 13 games. Now, Kyle Rudolph was released and signed by the Giants in the offseason, which opens up the tight end one spot for Irv to take over. Irv is only 22 years old. And I'm another guy that, like Noah Font for uh, the Broncos, we need to see the production out of this guy. He was drafted high because... Everyone saw it in college, and, you know, I think he was he suffered in college being on the same team as Jalen Waddell and Devontae Smith and, you know, the slew of guys that uh, Jerry Judy was on his team. All of these guys that got drafted uh, at the receiving position took away from his targets. And so now that Irv is fully the tight end one with Justin Jefferson, with Adam Thielen, can he make himself – equally as dangerous of a weapon as those two guys. Some other names, Robert Tunyon, Green Bay Packers. He comes in at number 11 in this. Mike Gesicki of the Miami Dolphins comes in at 12. Two guys that are easily tight end ones for your team. Tyler Higby with the Rams, with Matthew Stafford there. He loves a, a solid tight end. Gerald Everett left in the offseason, so Tyler Higby's really the, the top tight end option for that team. Hunter Henry now with the New England Patriots. Jonu Smith now with the New England Patriots. How are they going to work? Are they going to count each other out? Are they both going to produce? I don't think they're both going to produce. I think Hunter Henry will probably become Cam's favorite guy if he can stay healthy. Rob Gronkowski, do you stash him on your bench? He's probably going to find his way to Boomer's team, Botch's team, or Nino's team. Evan Ingram, I'm going to be fully honest as a Giants fan. Evan's an elite athlete. He's fast. He's quick. He can get separated. He's got the hands of a little bitch. He gets in his own head in the big game moment. He had a crucial drop to lose to the Eagles earlier in the season last year, and his production is just not there. Only having two touchdowns, he had 654 receiving yards, but he played in all 16 games. Uh, I would never draft Evan Ingram because he's a Giants fan and it would truly make me too frustrated. But you know what? He's a good handcuff option if you have a guy like Kyle Pitts and Evan Ingram. That's a pretty good pairing right there. Anthony Ferkser with Jonu Smith leaving. Anthony Ferkser becomes the Tennessee Titans wide receiver one option. Jonu Smith only left because he had such a good year last year for the Titans. In fact, last year he had nine touchdowns for the Titans, which means Tannehill loves the tight end target because A.J. Brown and Julio are going to be covered. Ferkser is going to get at least 10, 20 more targets in, in, in these games because he's going to be open. Frankly put, like the defenses are going to try and scheme around the best guys, the best weapons, and that's Julio. That's Derrick Henry. That's A.J. Brown, not Anthony Ferkser. And he's going to benefit from that. So someone to watch. That's the tight ends for you. I'm going to run through really quick a couple flex options that maybe I didn't mention at the end here. So some flex flex options for you. Hunter Renfro, Raiders wide receiver. He, for some reason, is uh, one of Derek Carr's favorite targets. 
Rashad Bateman, Baltimore Ravens wide receiver, got hurt, so just be wary of him. Rondell Moore of the Arizona Cardinals rookie. Uh, he's poised for a big year. Jacoby Myers for the Patriots is one of Cam's favorite targets for some reason. For some reason. Jamison Crowder with the Jets. Sammy Watkins with the Ravens, especially with Bateman's injury. Expect Sammy Watkins to come back and, and make some noise this year. I'll give you a few running backs that have some flex value here. Sony Michelle yesterday was traded to the Los Angeles Rams. So he's going to be their RB1, or at least their third down red zone back. Justin Jackson for the Chargers. He's RB2 to Austin Eckler, but he's really the between-the-tackles runner that you should keep an eye out on. Jarek McKinnon, Latavius Murray, you know, these are the guys. David Johnson, Philip Lindsay, these are the guys that you're going to need to rely on because one of the big boys gets hurt. So just keep that in mind. Oh, there's Bailey. Bailey, say hi. Bailey. Yay, there she is. That's Bailey. She's a flex option for you. And this is your commissioner signing off. I'm not going to do defense, kicker, special teams. You guys can figure that out. It's fairly straightforward. So that's a wrap on the positional breakdowns. I'll be hitting you back throughout the season. Going to try and get the graphics back. Got the dog here. Things are great. Draft on Sunday. Be ready.